Buongiorno a tutti, buongiorno a tutti, buongiorno a tutti, buongiorno a tutti, buongiorno a tutti. My name is Dom, welcome to Italy. I'm entering the freestyle category in the Great Guitar Build Off 2022 and I'm going to be building a steel bodied resonator guitar. Now, I like to use recycled materials as much as possible. And to that end, I'm going to be building the body of the guitar from these old dough pipes, the cone, I'm going to use one of these aluminium pan lids, cone cover, I'm going to use one of these steel trays. For the neck, this, which is an old riser from a staircase, some sort of hardwood but I don't know what. Down here, here's a bit of the stove pipe that I've already flattened on this slip mill. Still got soot on the back, so I need to clean that up yet. Now, this is uh, only going to be my third guitar that I've built. The second is this one, which I've built as a little practice piece, just to make sure my construction techniques were going to work. I'm going to be building a full-size version of this. Pretty much out of mostly recycled materials. The only thing I'm going to need to buy are strings, frets, tuners, uh, and a truss rod for the big one, just to be on the safe side of it. Now, I've not set myself an easy task here, because not only am I a novice guitar builder, I'm also a novice welder. And I've chosen probably one of the most difficult metals to work with. This is inox or inox. It's very hard due to its high chromium content. It's also very thin. It tends to distort quite easily under any sort of heat. That being said, let's make some sparks. Still full of soot, so I'm going to have to clean that out before I can start flattening. The soot cleans out quite nicely. It ends up all over me, of course. So next thing to do, get it through the slip mill, get it flattened out. So I've cut down the stove pipe and flattened it out on the slip mill. The template I cut out of a bit of thin ply. I'll scribe around that uh, to cut out the body shape. Here's one I did earlier. I have to do everything by hand. I've got no sort of machinery, so I'm using a pair of aviation nips to, <laughs> to cut this thin metal. Gives you four arms like Popeye though. <laughs> I've also cut down the sides. Uh, what I have to do now with these is cut some kerfing. So just running a set of teeth down each side to fold over to give me the joint against the body. Uh, again, I have to do it by hand with these. So I'm using the piece I've already cut to scribe round so inside to inside just in case there are any discrepancies which there may well be <laughs> at least it would be top and bottom would be fairly identical
Next thing I need to do on the body uh, top is cut out for the comb weld and cut out some detailed sound holes. Tad. Okay, here we are. I've marked on the inside here where the first bend's got to be. And that's the next job. I think that's just about right. I've got to bend over all these little teeth to form a good joint for the top and bottom to fit on. <clears throat> Here's one I've done earlier. Got to get a nice tight edge here, otherwise the when you start welding it just melts this very thin metal. I'm also hopefully going to be cutting the sound hole today for the well. About that size goes in here. Okay, so I've scribed where I'm going to be cutting for the well for the cone and I've also, with the help of a little template, uh, scribed where the sound hole is going to be. I'm going to uh, cut everything with a little multi-tool with a diamond tip blade on the end. It takes a while to get into the inox with that but once it's in it cuts quite nicely. floppy at the moment but uh, when the sound well goes in here that's going to firm everything up again because it's just basically a short cylinder I hope. So I've drilled a lot of pilot holes here to get me started it's just a question now joining up the dots safety gear on <laughs> Thank you.
an easy task and there's going to be a lot of filing to be done. This is uh, the result of cutting with a little uh, multi-tool. It's very rough, lots of burrs. And this is what it looks like after I started cleaning it up. Still got a bit of work to do. And there's going to be plenty of polishing to do when I'm finished. Welding, welding and then some more welding as I assemble the body of the guitar. Tacking this uh, ring to the inside here. Give that a little clean up and look okay in the end. So the cone itself is going to sit in here with a biscuit bridge on the top, which come, then comes out through the cone cover and the strings go over the top of that. So I've now put the uh, uh, cone well together. Next thing to do is to clamp it to the inside of the top start doing some welding that's the well in place not the prettiest of jobs but nobody's going to see it <laughs> little spots of bluing come through but they all polish out like that Okay, so I've now welded the back of the guitar in place. It's uh, a little rough looking, but once I get the grinder to it, that should uh, clean it up nicely. It's time to make some more sparks as I clean up this weld. Then I can see where the holes are and go back and fill them. <laughs> It's not too bad. A little bit of finish off there. It's getting a bit warm again though. This bit's come out really nicely. I've done a little bit of light polishing on there already. I've got a few holes and divots to fill in. Yeah, that's a good one there. <laughs> It's just a question of going back around with some uh, filler material just to fill them in and then grind it down again. And it should all come out, hopefully, nice and smooth like this section here. So the next thing to do is going to be putting the uh, top on, welding the top on. Got to get some more argon before I do that though. Uh, before that, there's a little bit of internal woodwork to do. So I've cut a slot where the neck stick's gonna go. So I'm gonna put a little block in this end for a brace. And in this end, there you go. Here, there'll be a, another block that the other end of the neck stick sits in. And also I screw through that for the Sorry, I'm having a bit of a senior moment because I can't, for the life of me, remember what what this part's called. 
It's the tail piece. I knew it would come to me eventually. I've now tacked the top on in various places. Now it's just a question of going round the whole thing uh, and joining up all the all the dots. <laughs> uh, it's going to be very time consuming, so I probably won't film a lot of it because there's a lot of starting and stopping and changing position because you can't work in one area for too long because it gets too hot and starts melting the metal. <laughs> side I know but apart from that it's not too bad it's not the most prettiest of jobs but um, as I've said before as well as being a being new to guitar building I'm also new to welding so more practice it'll get better I'm afraid I've got a little bit ahead of myself here because I've started making the neck uh, but I forgot to film it so I've taken a piece of this old staircase part, a riser from the staircase, and uh, I've cut it down, uh, laminated two sections together, cut a scarf joint, and put a rudimentary headstock on there. I've now got to do a lot of planing to square it all up before I can route out the channel for truss rod. to run the router up. Looks like I can finish the rest of this by hand because um, channel cut, a little bit rough at the end there, I've got a nice tight fit, next thing, shape the neck, well, I've now cut the neck to the right length and I've marked it up to cut it to shape and the headstock, also taken a lump out of the back so that I can put that in for the heel. So I'll glue all that in and then I can start shaping, once that's cut, I can start shaping the neck. Okay, I've now cut the neck stick and the channel in the bottom of the neck so that will fit in there so 
like so. So the next job there is to glue that in place, then route out a little section for the end of the truss rod. Uh, this then fits through the body into the bottom block and through this little block here. It all sits nice and tightly like in there, like so. Then I've got these holes here which I'm going to screw through uh, when the top's on to screw the neck in place. So just come through these two holes. So when that's in place, the neck stick supports the bottom of the well. Coming together, I now have the neck stick glued in place. I've cut the extra length through that for the truss rod. Might have to shave a little bit off the top here, half a millimetre or so, because uh, it's got to fit under the metal body. And now I'm just going to start fastening the neck. I've done the one part already. Just going to do the other side. So it's a question of uh, finding your centre line and marking, aligning the side and then working to that, then bisecting that again and again and again and again and again until you all end up with a, a nicely rounded uh, neck. And then it's a lot of sanding. <laughs> Okay, so then we have the facets first set. Then we bisect those again. sides a bit more and then it's a question of doing the each end so I'll have to get a round file and things in here to shape this heel. So for the fretboard of this guitar I've decided to use some very old oak oak beams that used to be in this uh, what was the cantina is now my workshop it was holding up a big old bench that they used to use for pressing olives and grapes and all that sort of thing. So this is uh, part of the beam, one of the beams that came out. Uh, it must have been in the house for 50 odd years. It's rock hard. <laughs> the only way I could cut it is with a chainsaw. So I took a slice out and then took a slice off that with the chainsaw. I'm now going to, I've got no planer, only hand planes. Uh, so to speed things up a bit, I'm just gonna route, uh, get my router and just take that uh, down to the right sort of level. I found the lowest, lowest spot around here. So I'm kind of working to that. Um, we'll see how it goes. Oh,
out too bad. I'm just going to run the hand plane over it and then do some sanding. flat fretboard so no, not radiusing it at all because principally it's going to be for playing bottleneck blues. I've um, finalised the size of the fretboard and I've marked out where the frets are going to go so I'm going to cut those now. Done the first two already. It's always a bit nerve-wracking uh, making sure they're all in the right place and properly aligned. Also marked out for the dot markers, so I'll draw those at the same time. finished shaping the neck. A little bit of tidying up to do in places but I'm quite happy with that. Uh, put some locating pins in for the fretboard which is now stained. Put the fret mar uh, dot markers in. I'm now going to uh, glue that in place. Whack the glue on. Far too much as usual. in. Okay, so it's time to put some frets in now. Uh, I've also faced the uh, head of the guitar with uh, another bit of steel marked out for where the tuners are going to go. I've already cut the frets. Oh, banging a few in. It's quite important to have a firm base to work on. So can get these in quite hard. Fretboard finished. 
Uh, apologies for missing footage. Uh, my camera angle went off and I didn't actually manage to record any of me crowning and polishing these frets. I've put the tuners in for this headstock and I've faced with some more Hinox in making the resonator cone from this aluminium pan lid. quickly you end up with something like that. So I'll run that through the wheel a few more times just to get it nice and even. I'm just going to put it together now with the disc bridge. in there. Uh, it's pretty much the same principle for the cone cover. Uh, I've taken one of these steel trays, cut the rim off it, <clears throat> run it through the wheel again, get a very shallow uh, dome on it because I'm trying to keep the action on the guitar quite low and then I've, as you've seen before with the the fans on the body just cut out these slots so there's a little uh, string guard to go over the top there that all sits in there like so then the cover goes on there and then the tailpiece will come over here the thing i need to make is the tailpiece. Uh, so what we're going to do, um, this is a bit of an old uh, sieve handle. And I've got some more of the inox which I've cut to shape to fold, fold over and bend in to hold in place. And then I'm attached, going to attach this once I've cut out the shape and then put holes in it to thread the strings through and made this nice sort of low level affair and the body is now polished the neck is complete including my little made in Italy tag cone cover and cone itself are ready to go in through the tail piece into that so that draws the when you screw in through that draws the neck down now have to get a couple of screws into the back of the heel through the block at the front there. So that just draws the neck in nice and tight against the body. And one more thing to put in, a little screw here through the bottom of the fretboard, which goes into the top of the neck stick through the body, draws everything together. In the, the old national guitars, they put these through the dot markers. Uh, um, so you put the dot marker on top. Uh, I didn't consider doing this until <laughs> I'd already put the dot markers in. I didn't want to take them out and put them in again. 
So I'll just put this one here on the bottom. I'm now going to cover the little plate, the name of the guitar, stovepipe. Trouble with this material, it is very thin. It's a bit flexible. So I've made a couple of little pads that are going to sit under this neck stick and keep the back firm. It in there like that, well, tension will keep them in place, and that takes any wobble out of the back. There. One of the advantages of the, the biscuit bridge is you've got a certain amount of movement to it, um, so I've been able to get the intonation pretty much spot on. I guess, I mean, I've got some gaskets to put in just in case there's any rattle, but hopefully, not. Is it just thin card? A bit of thin foam. And the same with another one for the cone cover. Okay, that's screwed in. to do a bit of this recording um, it's a lot nicer up here than it is in my workshop <laughs> there's lots of bugs up here that's a bit of a problem
well, just get off me if I can. I'll have to call it quits in a minute because I thought there was a storm coming and uh, I'm getting bitten to death here. <laughs> so that's a guitar. All finished. I think it's sounding pretty good. Sounds like a resonator guitar to me. So. I'm happy with that. It's playing really nicely. I've got the action nice and low on it. So that's good for uh, fretting notes as well as playing slide. So I'm pretty pleased so with it. Um, back in the workshop, uh, the guitar is finished, but it's certainly not going to be the last guitar that I build. It's, uh, not only have I been bitten by the bugs up in the mountain, but I've also been bitten by the guitar building bug. Uh, and I plan to build uh, quite a few more under the name Steel Ridge Guitars. Uh, that's it for this build for the Great Guitar Build Off 2022. Uh, I'd just like to say a few thank yous, firstly to my wonderful partner Jenny for her love and support. Uh, and also thank you to everybody at the Great Guitar Build Off. I will be back for the build off in 2023. And I'd like to thank uh, all my friends and family for their support and uh, for subscribing and watching these videos. Ci vediamo dopo. Arrivederci.